Hi, today we've got a new soldering station to look at. This is the Ixon T320 that's just been released and Ixon very kindly sent this to me for the video. So this is really quite a nice compact system that is designed for JBC style cartridges. It comes in two different versions. Uh, the version that we've got here is the T245 and that takes the slightly larger cartridges. It does come with three of those but you can also get it with the T210 handpiece and three of the slightly smaller cartridges. Now the unit is the same for both and if you decide you want to switch to a different handpiece you can just buy another handpiece and plug it into the back and it will automatically detect. So the unit is the same no matter what. And a quick reminder that today's video is sponsored by PCBWay and I've had some PCBs made there and we'll solder these up later in the video with this system to see how it performs. But these are some relay boards that I'm adding on to those home automation PCBs that I made quite a long time ago. I haven't done an update on those for ages, but they're working quite well. Um, after I've done this, uh, maybe in a few videos time, I'll give an overview of what the system's doing at the moment because there's a few extra sensors that I want to add to it, which means that we need to hack a few of them that I bought on AliExpress and we'll get some new boards made at PCB Way. So, a little bit more detail about the unit. Uh, some quite interesting specifications. So this unit is rated at 200 watts output power. Um, that is if the cartridges can take it, but that's what the unit's rated for. And interestingly, this one also has a universal input voltage. So you can uh, buy this unit and use it around the world. It's the same unit that will be shipped uh, no matter where you are. So that probably helps the price come down just a little bit, but it does mean that there's a switch mode power supply in here. So when we take it apart, we will have a look at the power supply in particular and just see how that looks. I know many people would prefer a standard iron core transformer or something like that, uh, but we've got a switcher in here. It should do the job if it's safe enough. This one's also got a 2.4 inch full color TFT, very similar to the T420D that we reviewed a while back. So we've got plenty of room on there for lots of nice graphics. And in fact, one of the features on here is very similar to what we had on the JBC system where you're able to plot the temperature and the power being delivered into the cartridge so that you can try and understand the solder joints that you're doing. Also, we've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. I think that's primarily for firmware updates. It doesn't mention anything about any software that you can buy that allows you to remote control the unit. And then the other thing that it mentions is about this um, little metal pad just here. And this is designed to be able to perform some basic control of the system by touching the soldering tip on here. So you can do things like change the preset and you can also adjust the temperature up and down. How useful that really is, I think uh, the jury's out on that one, but we'll give that a test and see how that actually works. So here is the front of the unit. We've got obviously the colour TFT on the front here as well as some buttons. So up and down, we've got the memory presets 1 to 3 and also a set button that probably goes into the menu as well. And then to the side, we've basically got the cradle built in. And this has everything uh, pretty much the same as a standard cradle. So we've got a cradle here where you actually put the handpiece and that detects when the handpiece is in there so it can put it into a lower temperature mode. We've got a metal block here which is for removing cartridges or pushing new ones in. We've got a bit of storage for four cartridges just at the side here. Some brass wool in here and a sponge for cleaning the tip. And this whole area just around here is made from silicone so obviously temperature resistant so if you're a little bit haphazard ha with your soldering iron when you're putting it away and you're doing it slightly blind or something like that then it doesn't matter if you poke any of these areas it's not going to do any burning but it's just in that area here the rest of it is made from the same plastic that everything else is made from and it does feel extremely lightweight uh, I mean it feels well made but it's very lightweight because of the fact that it's got a switch mode power supply in there something of this size you'd probably expect to have an iron core transformer that would give it quite a bit of heft but this one they've gone for the switcher just so they've got one version um, globally rather than having different versions for different voltages. On the back here, we've got an IEC connector with a switch and a fuse, a connector for the handpiece, and then an ESD connector as well, and then a USB port, which allows you to do firmware updates, that allows you to connect to the Ixon software. On the bottom here, we've just got some sticky feet and the screws, and the other screws are probably under these sticky feet. And then just on this side, there is one thumb screw. 
and that is to attach uh, this little thing that holds the wire out of the way. I tend not to use that because it actually gets in the way more than anything else. Uh, but you can attach that to the side here. Um, obviously, now with this design, the cradle and everything is fixed on the right-hand side of the unit. But um, I think that probably is okay, even if you're left-handed. Uh, now, there is a marking on here. I think this isn't indicating that you can do any wireless charging or anything on the top here. I might be wrong, but there's no mention of it in uh, on the website or anything like that. So I think this is just some markings to show that it's a wireless device. But when we take it apart, we'll uh, find out for sure. So these are the bits that you get with it. You also get a mains lead. Uh, mine came with a Shuko type plug, so no good for the UK. Uh, but you get the Ixon T245A. This is the same one that was on the T420D with the blue sleeve. So not much to write home about there. Pretty much the same as every other uh, T245 handpiece. But it does come with these foam sleeves that's well worth sliding over here. They're a little bit fiddly to get on on their own. So actually, if you happen to have the JBC plastic sleeves that help you get this on, uh, that would be quite handy. Uh, but they stop your fingers getting quite so warm because over time this does get quite hot if you're soldering for long periods and it also improves the grip a little bit and then you get the standard three cartridges that you seem to always get with these systems so you get the bent conical you get the very pointy conical it looks a lot bigger because they put a magnifier here and then you've got the blade type cartridge so to start with we'll try with these but then for the soldering of those pcbs i've got some standard jbc cartridges um, that i will use for that soldering so we've got the unit apart and we'll look at the bottom half first. It all looks fairly neat um, and mainly on this bottom half is just the power supply PCB. But there is a little riser board here for the back panel connections. So this looks like it's Ixon's own power supply T320 power version 1. And maybe what I'll just try and do now is see if I can remove these connectors and then maybe we can remove the board from the case. Here's the power supply PCB and everything looks well in order. Uh, it's got a marking on here, 24 volts, 8.6 amps. So that's the rating of this unit. Um, but everything looks nice and tidy on here. We've got the mains coming in here. Fuse, NTC, MOV, filters. We've got bridge rectifier, bulk capacitors. We've got the switching uh, MOSFET just here. Uh, we've got the two output diodes. and We've got a couple of outputs on here as well. Uh, some nice decent uh, capacitors as well and then on the underside we've got all of the switcher electronics now i think the controller is this chip here now it's marked n4458a but i can't seem to find any reference to that device um, so i wasn't able to find out what it actually does or uh, its specifications but uh, they seem to have designed this fairly well everything looks really quite nice and neat we've got a fairly clear isolation barrier but no slots but the isolation goes around here and through those optocouplers and around here. Uh, the other thing to note is the earth connection does actually connect directly to the output side. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, um, but we do get continuity between the earth pin and the zero volts on here. Now, I did hear some people mention that when you're soldering onto a PCB that has a a ground reference like you've left it plugged in or something like that it can alter the reading you get from the thermocouple and force the heater on i suspect that will still be a problem here because what you really need is kind of a fully isolated power supply so the whole thing is floating it's fine to earth the tip of the solder iron but if all of the electronics is referenced to zero volts here and the same as mains earth then any voltage that you're trying to sense with the thermocouple is just going to get lost uh, by shorting that connection. So I think we'll still have the same problem with this system. Uh, it doesn't exist on the T420D because we've got a proper um, transformer in that unit, but this one is going to have, unfortunately, that same problem. So if you are going to be soldering onto some PCBs, make sure they're fully disconnected from the mains or any other power supplies. Looking at the rest of the unit, we've got some really nice construction going on. So all of the mains wires are really nicely crimped. The connector here with the mains leads is also silicone so these wires have no chance of accidentally coming loose we've got one wire which is the earth going off to the banana jack on the back but it also returns along here now you'll notice this wire is extremely thick uh, but it's actually almost all insulation it's super flexible and that's because it runs underneath the power supply so they've enhanced the insulation on this one wire and they've also used a 
flat flex cable to connect this back panel PCB, which I can't actually remove because uh, some stuff's glued in place. Um, but this is glued to the bottom of the case, so there's no chance of this wandering off and touching the power supply. Uh, that was potentially a problem on the T3A and T3B, where the wires run underneath, but they didn't have sufficient um, insulation and there was a risk of it accidentally uh, touching some mains contacts. But what they've done here, uh, they've glued it down, but they've also got this uh, foam pad, which is really quite thick, and that prevents it uh, from folding up if it did come loose and touching the PCB. So they've really thought about that. They put the markings on here to say absolutely where it needs to be placed. Um, so that all shows some fairly decent attention to detail. Now, the FFC is um, siliconed in, so I can't remove the back panel PCB but I think all it's got is the USB uh, connection and also the connection off to the soldering iron. There's no components on the back here really, uh, I think just something like an ESD diode I think I saw down here. So it looks like they're actually running the uh, USB connections along this flat flex as well on the underside just here and then off to the PCB at the front. So here's what the front of the unit looks like. Um, now we've got uh, the connection here which goes to the cradle that detects that the handpiece is in place. We've got another uh, connection here which detects when you're pushing a tip into the soldering iron. Uh, and then there's also a, um, a couple of wires here which go to that metal pad. Now that isn't actually an electrical connection, that is a thermocouple that is connecting uh, through here onto the PCB. That's why we've got two wires here, but you'll notice They've done some decent cable management. Uh, they've got these clips here that are holding the wires right to the side so it doesn't get anywhere close to the power supply. Uh, they've also spiral bound those wires as well and also the one just here to keep everything nice and tidy. And these wires they've used uh, that teaser tape uh, that is often used in cars to stop it uh, coming loose and vibrating. That is stuck, it's like a fabric tape that's stuck to the bottom here to keep these wires in place. So if you look really, Everything is very nicely managed in here. Quite a contrast from uh, possibly some of the other stations that we've looked at in the past. So this is all really nice and tidy and really managing risk, present, preventing uh, these wires drooping over the power supply and that kind of stuff. Here's the front panel PCB and far more complex than the T3A and T3B. It looks like they've made various improvements. Uh, the main thing on here is the Giga Devices STM32 that's running the TFT and the interface and the control of the iron. But there is also an ESP32 just here with a few traces going up to here, but that's doing the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. Uh, we've got a programming header here for the ESP32. We've got a couple of switch mode power supplies. We need various supply voltages for these two chips. And we've probably got an analog supply for the op amp that is reading the thermocouple on the soldering iron. And we've got various optocouplers here. I think this is for level shifting for high side driving of these transistors just here. It seems to tie in very closely to these transistors. So that's all I can assume it's for. Certainly with no isolated power supplies on here, they can't be isolating the thermocouple reading uh, that would alleviate that issue that I was talking about earlier. So I think this is all just to do with driving uh, these transistors. But really quite a complex board compared to the old T3A and T3B. It looks like they've made many changes here uh, that should really make this quite a stable system. So hopefully you can see the display there. So it's gone into the standby temperature and it's just keeping it warm there at 100 degrees C. If we press the M1 to 3 button, then it allows you to pick a preset, and that gets highlighted at the bottom here. But when you change the temperature, uh, then it just allows you to adjust that freely. So let's try removing the handpiece from the cradle. And it goes red there and quickly heats up. And there is at 370. Now, interestingly, it's still got the 380 illuminated here even though I picked a different temperature. That's the last preset that I used, but you would expect that to kind of go away um, rather than it still remain highlighted. But I think that's fairly similar to the T420 in the user interface at this point. Now, if you press the set button, 
we get the graphing mode and if we put some thermal load on it like this wet sponge we should see the power going up you see the temperature deviate a little bit and then the power go back down as we remove the soldering iron from the wet sponge so the idea here is that you can kind of see what's going on with the thermal profile as you're doing some soldering so not quite the same as jbc's uh, soldering assistant it doesn't allow you to capture each solder joint but it does give you in real time kind of what the soldering iron is doing which is quite handy i'll put it back in the cradle and then it goes back into sleep mode as you can slowly see the temperature decreasing there that's the red line so the fa the basic functionality is all pretty simple. I mean, basically up, down to set the temperature. And if we change the temperature, it's got an annoying beep, first of all, but it changes in five degree steps. I'm not sure if we can adjust that. Uh, and then if we want to store a new temperature, I assume we pick our new temperature and we hold down this button here. Nope, maybe not. I think we may have to set that in the menu. So to get into the menu, you press the set button, hold it down. And we've got various options here. So we've got the system menu, first of all, and it's saying the bottom button is OK. So we've got our languages sound, which I'm immediately going to turn off. Uh, click M1 to 3 to return. Wi-Fi, so that allows you to connect via Wi-Fi. There's a reset time i'm not sure quite how oh, that's just how long it's been used for and the boot time surprising it says 14 hours does that mean they had some burn-in period or something like that at the factory i'm not sure uh, certainly this is the first time i've turned it on system information so on version 1.04 they've given you the details of the ixon website and when it was manufactured the 8th of this month so this is really quite a new device uh, so that's all there is in that menu. Then we can go down to the temperature menu and press OK. Uh, degrees C. And this is where we store the preset. So 280 is pretty useless. Uh, we'll increase that to 330. That's one of my standard temperatures. Uh, 350 is OK and 380 is fine. So we'll go with those. Uh, and then we've got the compensation. So we can adjust the calibration. Uh, then we've got the... Well, I think it's supposed to say standby, but it says standy. Um, and that's got the temperature. So 100 degrees, that's fine. Uh, the delay before going into uh, that lower temperature, 10 seconds. So um, if you want to, at the moment it's turned off, but if you want to, you can wait 10 seconds just in case you're rapidly um, bringing the soldering iron in and out of the cradle. Uh, what it does with the display. So the display turns off, it looks like, when it's in sleep and how long before it goes into sleep mode. So about 30 minutes, and then it will fully turn the iron off. Uh, and then we're back to the system menu. So just those three options on there, but uh, that gives you all of the control that I think you'd need. So yeah, that's the operation of the unit. Let's have a look at the calibration. All right, so I've got the calibrator here. So we'll give the tip a quick clean, and we're set to 350, so let's see what we get. Three fifty five, three fifty six. So that's pretty good. Seven degrees. That's well within tolerances for IPC standards. Uh, let's try one of the lower temperatures here. Three thirty. This might take a moment to cool down. Let's give it some help. There we go. So it looks like it's just about seven degrees off. And finally, three eighty. A very quick to heat up there, 387. So pretty consistent 7 degrees offset. Now if I change the tip, obviously that's going to be different. So, But that's well within um, what I would consider acceptable limits, certainly within the IPC standard there for those temperatures. So um, I'm pretty happy to go ahead soldering with that. So let's test it out with a little bit of soldering here. We've got a mix of through hole and surface mount soldering on this PCB that I've had made at our sponsor PCB Way.
So that was pretty pleasant to use, absolutely no problems with basic soldering. I wouldn't expect it to struggle anyway, uh, but that's what these PCBs look like. Uh, we've got the pin header onto the main board, some status LEDs, a couple of MOSFETs and some back EMF diodes for the two relays. And then we've got these interesting terminal blocks. I was um, out of space, managed to find these on RS and that just handles the problem where the PCB isn't quite wide enough for six terminals. I do need both the normally open and normally closed contacts on these relays. So that has got around it. But uh, yeah, absolutely no problem there with some soldering. Let's just uh, try soldering a two pence coin. It's been a long time since we've done one of those tests. So I thought it might be interesting to bring up the graph on this one. Uh, I'm not expecting any kind of performance difference compared to the JBC or the T3A. So uh, let's see what it actually does as we're heating up this coin. So I've got the timer up, and I normally do it for 25 seconds or so. Here we go. Temperature's set to 360. I normally try and do it to 357 just because that matches the Metcal. But there you go, it's spreading really, really fast there. You can see the power being delivered going down. And yeah, there we go. Absolutely great. So uh, very similar to the JBC systems. There's not really any performance difference to speak of. Uh, just slightly less spread than we saw on the Metcal, which seems to be unbeaten at the moment. So here's a close up of the coin. And as you can see, lots of spread of solder. It melted very, very quickly. Partly obviously due to the fact that we've got a genuine JBC cartridge there with a five millimeter tip, which is designed for high power delivery. But without the... Uh, power supply that's in this unit we wouldn't be able to put that power into the coin so it worked very well interesting from the point of view of the graph that's on the front of the unit uh, basically we saw the power start off right near the top and then it started dropping down and that's because initially the coin was cold so we had to put lots of power into that coin but then it basically reached the same temperature as the soldier iron so the power going in there is basically just replacing the losses uh, basically to ambient and to the, the PCB that it was sitting on. Um, so yeah, works really well. So I was just swapping out the cartridge and I did happen to turn it off. And interestingly, when you turn off the unit, it does display power off for some period. So it looks like there's enough energy stored in those capacitors to keep the unit running enough to display that message. But it is able to also detect the loss of AC power, which I thought was quite interesting. But I realised there was one feature we hadn't tested uh, before the end of the video, and that is this little pad here that you can use to change some of the settings. So it says, touch the sensor twice to change the preset. And that's changed it to 330, 350, and 380. And then back to 330. And then it says, touch the metal sensor and then hold it for more than one second and the temperature can be decreased. And there you go, it's decreasing. And touch the metal sensor with the soldering iron for more than one second and the temperature will increase. And yeah, so you can quickly change the temperature there. Quickly touch the metal sensor with the tip to stop heating. And that's turned off the iron and touch again to start heating. Yeah, so that does allow you to change the temperature quite easily. I'm not sure it's any easier than just pressing it with the buttons, but I guess if you've got your hands full and you need to change some settings, that is another feature that you could use. So I realised we should probably test the problem that I was talking about earlier, where if you touch something that is connected to Earth, it skews the reading. So what I've done is I've plugged in this lead into the back of the unit where the ESD connector is. That's connected straight to mains earth. And we can put it on one of these pads here that's connected to where the crocodile clip is connected. So if I remove this from here, we let it settle at 310. And we'll just test it on a different connection on the PCB. And basically nothing happens there. Now if we connect it onto this trace here... We do get something happening, and it does bump up the temperature a little bit, but it seems to realise what's going on and then lock out. So they haven't fixed it entirely, but they have prevented uh, the temperature just going up uncontrollably to maximum power. So certainly, 
you can see the moment where I touch this one that's connected electrically and we get some weird readings. It does jump up, but not for very long. But then if I touch one of these pads over here, obviously you get no reading at all. So there is some influence. It means that the system isn't isolated, which is what I've noticed before. But perhaps in firmware, they found a way to find if the reading goes way off, then obviously to disable the heater. So it does look like they've come to some kind of fix around that issue. So that's the Ixen T320, and I think this is a definite improvement over the T3A and T3B. Basically, it replaces both of those units because this unit can drive both types of handpiece, so there's no need for two different units if you prefer to use both types of handpiece there. Uh, the user interface is the same, so that all works quite nicely. And the fact that this one is now universal input voltage may be helpful for some. You can obviously open this unit up really easily. There's just five screws at the bottom. So if you do want to replace any parts or service it in any way, it's a lot easier to do than the T3A and T3B, which I know a lot of people struggled with. Uh, the calibration looks to be okay. There's just a couple of software fixes that I think could be implemented, like spelling errors and just one or two other things. But overall, this is a really tidy unit. I think a definite worthwhile spend uh, for the hobbyist. I don't think you can go far wrong with this one. Now, if you did have the money, I'd probably go for the T420D just because it's got that nice big transformer in there. There's very little chance of that failing in the future, but you should be able to uh, replace or service the power supply in this one if it does go wrong. Uh, and it does mean that this unit's quite a bit more compact and also a lot cheaper to have shipped to your address. And I think quite a lot of the cost of the T420D is the cost of shipping and handling something of that weight. So overall, I think it's very nice Soldier 9. Um, leave your comments and thoughts in the comments section down below. Don't forget to visit our sponsor for this video, PCB Way, and I will be doing some more giveaways soon, so uh, look out for those. But I hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful, and until next time, thanks for watching.